Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shalama Lawson. On today's bulletin, the war between police and combi crews rages on. An inter-cape bus catches fire on a busy intersection. The Guanza photo exhibition gets a thumbs down by the critics. And the Chess Federation needs more support. The ongoing battle between police and combi crews is still raging, with operators expressing concern over continued police abuse and the smashing of their windscreens. Jeffrey Moyo gives us the report. The war of words has erupted once again with combi crews and the police trading accusations over their bitter relations. On one hand, combi crews are accusing traffic cops of harassing them unnecessarily, while on the other, the police say the combi crews are a reckless lot who do not seem to care about observing the rules of the road. ATV caught up with the disgruntled combi crews in a battle zone in the city centre. Gombi crews say even if permits and other documents were in place, the police harassed them nevertheless. The police are not allowed a permit, license, defensive. Rank marshals accuse traffic cops of making unjustified demands just to frustrate combi crews. Combi operators took aim at multiple roadblocks dotted across the city's roads. My roadblocks are not quite necessary. I know you can't wear rogo. To find what's your roadblock one, to see what bends in any other mirror by hero saba. Ninge chi iyo ino inspector ma combi no kuvunza jus. However, some of the operators accused the fellow operators of practicing without proper documentation. Of the camera, Deputy Traffic Police Spokesperson Assistant Inspector Lakmo Chakanza accused omnibus operators of disrespecting designated parking zones. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare, Zimbabwe. A South African intercape bus caught fire on Wednesday at a city intersection, attracting a huge crowd of onlookers during the evening rush hour. Robert Tafumane reports. A bus crew had to get out of a scary situation when a South African intercape bus, they were in caught fire on Wednesday at the intersection of Samora Marshall Avenue and Rotten Row in the city. The Harare Fire Brigade reacted swiftly and put out a blaze before it completely wrecked the whole bus. Luckily, there were no passengers on board. Another witness held the firemen for reacting swiftly and taking action to save the bus from burning completely. One even went further and gave his mechanical knowledge of the luxury coaches. The unfortunate thing about Ima bus is iron. They've got to have a fire suppression system within the bus 
was the driver tried to use Nigikirima small extinguishers Shikaramba. But given the time, he had to the driver of the Indake bus refused to comment on the matter. Fortunately, there were no passengers on board and the bus was on its way to pick up passengers at roadport. The fire brigade still lacks financial resources and equipment to conduct its rescue services effectively, something which has led to the loss of lives and property in numerous other accidents. If it wasn't during the peak hour period, much of the damages could have been averted. Scores of workers who had just knocked off used their smartphones to take pictures, probably to share with their friends on the social networks. Reporting for ATV, Robert of Money, Arare, Zimbabwe. Art critics in Harare have criticized the ongoing photographic exhibition Gwanza, saying it does not capture new perspectives on identity, which is meant to be a key theme. Jairo Saunyama reports. Arts commentators in Harare say the ongoing Gwanza photo exhibition is failing to live to its billing as the photos are failing to address the theme of identity. Art enthusiasts who attended the opening ceremony on Thursday night at the National Art Gallery told ATV that the photos on exhibition were not matching with the chosen theme on identity. When you take content such as, well, transsexual or bisexual or homosexual content like this, and you expose people who have never come across such content, what are we saying? I saw some pictures that were pixelating and I was a bit disappointed by uh, that, and also uh, in general, uh, the theme of identity throughout the exhibition is not uh, really uh, coming out. It seems like uh, the artists were either shy or afraid to tackle the theme. Mostly that they lack professionalism, they're not communicating anything. Like picture in a gazette, but why you always have a picture in a gazette? Some pictures are in one and even about what two are up or one son, there's no creativity. What's the point? Some say the exhibition was confusing as there was no order in classifying photos done by upcoming and established photographers. There's a range of skill ranging from um, beginner photographers to obviously very skilled, experienced art photographers. But there's no order in the way that journey in skill um, as it grows is represented. There's, um, they're mixed up. So, so one is confronted with a very mediocre photograph and, and then one moves on to a series that is really powerful and there isn't an intertextual link. Efforts to get a comment from the creators were fruitless. However, despite all the criticisms leveled against the exhibitors, some of the photographers are upbeat. So we're just trying to get people to, to understand other people's identity. Uh, we now have the market photo workshop working with uh, Gwanza. Uh, definitely we will come up with something that will uh, develop the industry that is uh, still lagging behind compared to some African states. Art is a reflection of perception and this all depends on the lens of the photographer. Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Despite the fact that chess originated in Africa, the game still remains largely underdeveloped on the continent because of poor funding. Robert Tafumane gives us the report. The Zimbabwe Chess Federation needs more financial and material resources in order to develop the sport in the country, an official said recently. The official said this at a three-tire chess tournament which was held in Harare at the weekend. Uh, chess basically is an indoor game, so um, sponsors like mileage, like games, like soccer, swimming, where they have an audience sitting in the stadium watching. But chess is a board game sponsor some it takes someone with, uh, chess knowledge to sponsor chess the tournament director said the game of chess has improved significantly as shown by the kind of insight and positional understanding of the game by the participants uh, the level especially talk about the ladies they've come in numbers their strength is um, improving by the day 
So in terms of the candidates tournament, we've got a host of players who are quite good, who are trying to make it into the nationals for next year. Some of the players are undaunted by defeat and say they'll have to go back to the drawing board and to prepare for the next tournament. Uh, I was playing one of uh, the top players, Rugare uh, Mchena, and I think it's good. He was also second best, I think, last year in the candidates. So um, I was play, playing black and to defend against such a top player was always going to be difficult. I was trying to play for a draw, because it was my first game, but unfortunately it went didn't work out. The ladies section was mainly made up of young and upcoming chess players and scholars who battled out with veteran players. Competition at this year's edition of the tournament was tough. It featured veteran chess players such as Moses Gweshe, Gift Stole, Ruben Musa and Zimbabwe Republic police officers who had just qualified to represent Zimbabwe in the Subco Games. Meanwhile, Zimbabwe is registered a team of chess Olympiad to be held from August 27 to September 10 this year in Istanbul, Tekim. The men's team will be angered by Robert Guaze, Farai Mandija, Dion James Moyo and Lloyd Moyo as the reserve player. The ladies team is made up of teen sensation Coleta Wakurware Wa Rodamasiazi, Tatenda Zengeni and Paida Zengen with Bridget Pumoyo as the reserve player. Reporting for ATV, Robert of Money, Arare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.